Just recently, Specialized reincarnated their big hitting status bike, and this is the Status 160. The new Status is quite different in a lot of ways to its predecessor, but one thing it does have in common is that it's still built to be incredibly affordable. It also uses an aluminium frame, again partly to help save costs, but also in order to improve durability. But where things change somewhat is that this new bike is built around a mixed wheel size setup, so you get a smaller 650B wheel at the back and a larger 29er wheel at the front. As the name suggests, Status 160, it has 160 mm of travel as well. But before we go any further, just a big shout out to Freewheel who supplied today's kit. Uh, if you like any of the items you see here, please check the link in the description to find out more. The last time we tested a specialised status was way back in 2014, and after that six year hiatus, we're really pleased to see that it's back, especially now specialised claim that it's a no nonsense machine that's as reliable as a tank. Starting with the frame then, and as you can probably see, it's a full aluminium construction. Now this is actually designed around a mullet setup. Now that means a smaller rear wheel, and in this case 650B, with a 29 inch front wheel. We've seen Specialized offer this on their downhill bike, the demo already, and Lurt Bruni has clearly had a lot of success using this setup, but we haven't actually ever seen it on any of Specialized's other trail bikes, so it's quite interesting to see it used here. As I've already mentioned, the Status 160 has 160 mil of rear wheel travel, and in this case, it's all controlled using Fox's DPX2 rear shock. Now that comes via the tried and trusted four bar linkage, which Specialized use on plenty of their other trail bikes. But in this case, the shock yoke and the rocker link seem to have been beefed up somewhat just for this specific application. Just as on the rear, up front, there's also 160 mil of travel. And in this case, it's delivered using Fox's 36 rhythm fork. In terms of frame detail, Specialized have given riders the option to switch between a high and low position, which is done via a flip chip at the base of the shock. Then there's little things like the use of a threaded bottom bracket, which should in theory make maintenance that bit easier when the time does come around. But on the flip side, they have gone for internal cable routing. Now that does give nice clean lines and make things look a bit tidier. It also helps protect the cables a bit more. But when it comes to maintenance, it does add an extra little bit of faff in there. So it's kind of down to personal preference. If you don't mind that extra bit of time in the workshop, no problem. Or if you're like me, external cable routing tends to be a bit more of a bonus. Specialized offer the status in five different sizes, S1 through to S5, which is the longest bike available. If you're not familiar with the S range of sizing from Specialized, it's based around longer bikes with shorter seat tubes. That means it's much easier to up or downsize depending on your preference. For example, here I've got the S3 because I've got an S3 Enduro, so I wanted to say as similar to that as possible because the Enduro sizing works really well for me. That means I've got a reach on the S3 of 462 mil, so that's just two millimeters shorter than the S3 Enduro. The biggest difference here though is just how short the chain stays are. So the chain stays on this are only 426 mil long, which are pretty short by today's standards. Switching between the low and high settings is a pain-free affair and quick and easy, and it gives you roughly 0.5 degrees of adjustment on the head and seat angle, and actually moves the bottom bracket by nine millimeters up or down, depending on your preference. In the low setting, the bottom bracket sits at 338 mil off the floor, and the head angle is raked out to a super slack 63.2 degrees. Now, just for reference, that's even slacker than on the Enduro, and it's not a million miles off what's offered on their downhill bike, the Demo. And if you measure axle to axle, that gives the Status 160 a wheelbase of a not so insignificant 1,233 mil. So it's a pretty long bike. And finally, it's worth mentioning the 76 degree seat tube angle, which is there to help try and give you a more efficient position for climbing. Obviously a big selling point of the new status is just how affordable it is. Uh, and while it's still not cheap, Specialized have done a really good job in making sure they've spec some components which are fit for purpose and should handle a ton of abuse on the trail. Starting at the front, we've already mentioned the Fox 36 fork, 
The 36 is in reference to the upper tube diameter or the stanchions as they're more commonly known. And the idea being a fork like the 36 should in theory be that bit stiffer than the 34 or 32 that Fox also have in the range, which should deliver a bit more in terms of precision and accuracy. So a stiffer fork in general and more capable of handling some really heavy hard hits. SRAM supply the drivetrain, which in this case is their 12-speed NX Eagle transmission. Now, unlike the pricier version of that, that means their cassette actually slots onto a regular spline-free hub rather than their XD driver body. That means you don't get the small 10-tooth cog uh, as you do on you know, GX and upwards. Instead, it's an 11-tooth smallest cog up to, you still get the same 50-tooth uh, bigger cog. So it's still a relatively wide range and you've still got that nice easy gear for the really steep climbs. Now a real highlight for me here has to be the brakes. In this case, it's the SRAM Code R's. Why is that highlight for me? Well, I already mentioned I've got an Enduro at home as well. So that bike is the comp version. So it's the cheapest Enduro they make and that costs 4,500 pounds. And that uses the exact same brakes here. In fact, it uses the same drivetrain as well. But the brakes are really critical because if you don't have good brakes, you simply can't ride fast. Now that does sound kind of counterintuitive, but if you aren't confident when it comes to slowing down, then there's absolutely no way you can push yourself and ride that bit faster. My only real complaint when it comes to the spec are the tires. Now they're specialized own butchers in their 2.3 inch wide. While they're not too bad on softer, muddy conditions, they can get pretty skittish when you're riding damp hard pack trails or wet roots and rocks and they just don't feel quite as consistent or as predictable as some of the go-to tyres that we commonly use such as the Maxxis Minion DHR or the DHF. And then there's the X-Fusion Manic seat post. Now because of the way in which Specialized do their sizing, the seat tube on this S3 is actually really short at 420mm long. That means they can squeeze in a 170 mil drop post, which is what I've got here, which is fantastic because it means when it's dropped out of the way, it really is out the way. And I have absolutely no issues when it comes to clearance when I'm getting off the back of the bike when the trails get steep. The only downside to the Manic design, in my opinion anyway, is that you're pinching the end of the cable at the base of the post. That means getting the tension just right can be a bit of a fiddle compared to those that anchor at the remote end. So there is a little bit of faff when it comes to setup and ensuring cable tension is just right. But once you get it, the post works extremely well and so far has been really predictable and consistent. On to the ride impressions. And when it comes to climbing, as you might expect from a bike that weighs 16.3 kilos, maybe isn't the sprightliest when it comes to pointing it uphill. That doesn't mean it's not capable of getting to the top of the hill, it just means you need to add a bit more patience into your riding to get there. The back end of the status is also quite eager to sink into its travel. Now that means that when you do get mashing on the pedals and climbing, there's quite a bit of pedal bar. Luckily though, the DPX2 rear shock has an easy to reach low speed compression lever, which you can just switch on the fly to firm things up and make going way more efficient. Naturally, a bike like this though is designed predominantly for riding downhill and this is where it really does shine. And it's great to see a more affordable bike like this being as capable as it is. Thanks to that long wheelbase, the stretched out geometry and that raked out head angle, this bike is beyond confident when it comes to going fast or riding steep technical terrain. If you feel capable of pushing it really hard, this bike is eager to go faster and faster. The suspension is relatively well balanced. It did take me a little bit of time just balancing fork and shock pressures uh, to a point where I felt happy on it. But once you get there, it is a really easy bike to ride and it's nice and predictable too. The Rhythm 36 fork up the front might not feature the most sophisticated damper on offer from Fox, but it's by no means a bad fork. It still offers plenty of grip when you need it, and when it comes to those bigger compressions or higher speed hits, it does a really decent job of handling them. At the rear, there's enough progression built into the system to allow for really big hits and really big landings without just blowing through the travel. 
It maybe isn't quite as supportive in the mid-stroke as the Joro, for example, but it's a comfy ride and it soaks up the bumps in a really effective way. When it comes to cornering though, it did take me a little while just to learn the balance of the bike. Now that's because the front end is long in relation to that short back end. So where the longer back end on the Enduro means you feel more centered between the wheels, on this bike it feels like you need to throw your weight forward more so just to make sure that front end is digging in and gripping when tackling especially looser, flatter turns. But once you do get used to that long front end paired with that short back end, you can still rail the turns pretty damn well. Now while I have said it may take a little bit of time just to get used to the proportions of the bike, especially through the turns, a real benefit of having such a short, tight back end means that it's so easy to loft that front wheel up in the air. So while it might not feel quite as well centred and stable as the Enduro, it does feel more agile and arguably more fun in certain situations, which is a massive benefit, especially if you love riding places like bike parks, you know, jumps, stuff like that, where you can really throw the status about. So even though it is quite a hefty bike in terms of weight, it doesn't ride like one, which is massively important. Overall then, I think the Status 160 is a really great bike. It's also a really important bike as well. I think it's great to see that Specialized have invested in making a more affordable, big hit, do it all machine, which currently lacked from their range for some time. In terms of our performance then, yes, okay, maybe I would change the butcher tires, but that is just personal preference for me and should in theory not cost too much extra to do. But that said, it's hard to argue with the spec on this bike. So once you do get used to the proportions, this bike is great if you're just banging out laps of the bike park or you want to smash it down downhill runs or even take on the odd Enduro event. I'd certainly consider this over pricing machines, especially if it meant I had enough leftover cash for a little trip to a bike park or maybe even take it out to the Alps and really put it through its paces. So that's the Specialized Status 160. What do you guys think? Please let us know in the comments below. And please don't forget to like and subscribe and click on that little bell icon so you're always notified anytime we upload a new video.